In Chicago, Dr. Martin Steiner and his team of scientists are experimenting with a large particle collider machine when it suddenly goes into a meltdown. This causes a deadly explosion, resulting in widespread devastation. Hundreds and thousands of people are instantly killed, while millions of others are injured. In the aftermath of this event, Chicago is sealed from all sides and declared a no-go zone. However, strange ghosts suddenly start showing up here and there. Labeled as remnants, they are the projections of the people who died in the explosion. While they appear to be exactly like their true forms, they cannot alter the reality and hence are of no threat to the living people. The remnants only last for a few seconds, and their actions are carried out in a loop. This means that a remnant riding a bicycle today will be doing the same thing tomorrow. Hopefully none of these remnants' last moments were spent yerkin the gherkin. The movie then cuts to ten years later, and we are taken to a town just outside Chicago. Even here, many people were killed by the explosion, and their remnants are appearing on a daily basis. We are then introduced to Veronica Calder, a 17-year-old girl who lives with her mom Anna. Her dad was also one of the victims from that fateful day, and he now shows up every morning for breakfast in his remnant form. At school, the physics teacher, August Bittner, is giving a speech about the remnants. Veronica curiously asks why dead people from other timelines are turning into remnants as of late. She gives an example by pointing towards a girl who is clearly dressed in 80s attire. However, Bittner doesn't have an answer for this. During lunchtime, Veronica has her gaze fixed on a guy named Kirk, who is antisocial and obsessed with the remnants. It is said that he was kicked out of his previous school, but no one knows about the reason. That evening, as Veronica is taking a shower, an unknown remnant shows up out of nowhere, startling her. Then, something very creepy happens. The mysterious remnant writes the word RUN on the mirror, which is supposed to be impossible because they are just projections. The following day, a scared Veronica approaches Bittner and says that she wants to talk in private. He agrees and invites her over to his place. On arriving, they come across his daughter, Eva, but she acts cold and walks away. Veronica then explains the incident from the other night, which has left her deeply unsettled. However, Bittner says that it's impossible because the remnants cannot affect the real world. He reasons that she must have suffered a concussion due to the fall, which is making her see things. This teacher is useless so far. Later, Veronica decides to seek help from Kirk, as he knows a lot about the entities. She follows him to a cave, where hundreds of fish remnants are swimming. Kirk reveals that during the rainy season, this tunnel is usually flooded, and it supports a large number of aquatic life. He comes to this place every day to observe the fish remnants, which seem to be growing in number. This means that the recently dead fish are also turning into those entities. Once out of the tunnel, Veronica gets straight to the point and asks for his help in identifying the mysterious remnant from her bathroom. At first, Kirk refuses, saying that he is busy, but when she promises to do his assignments for him, he agrees. Later, at school, as they are brainstorming ways to find a solution, Veronica inadvertently calls the remnant Brian. When asked how she knows that name, she has no answer. Kirk then says that for them to start the research, they need to take a picture of Brian. Since ordinary cameras aren't capable of doing that, they will need a spectrographic lens. However, the problem is that these cost millions of dollars. Fortunately, Veronica has a friend who can set up a makeshift spectrographic lens using normal tools. She should probably monetize that shit, says Kirk. The duo then installs the camera in the bathroom and waits for Brian to arrive. After a while, he shows up, and the lens appears to be affecting him. He then lunges at Veronica, but at the same time, the lens shatters, causing him to disappear. Although it was a tense encounter, Kirk managed to capture a picture of him. He then does some research and learns about Brian's horrific past. The following day, at school, Kirk reveals to Veronica that Brian was a serial killer who abducted and murdered a local girl named Mary. To find more information, they then visit Mary's mother. The latter says that Brian stalked his daughter for weeks and eventually persuaded her to come with him. That was the last time anyone saw her alive. She was found dead later that night, while Brian committed the unthinkable the next day. In the next scene, we see Veronica and Kirk researching in the school library. After putting together all the clues, they discover that Mary was killed on her birthday. It was the 29th of February, also known as the Leap Year. Coincidentally, Veronica also has the same birthday, which makes her think if all the events might be related. As the two 
two are chatting, a mysterious figure appears behind them. Then the lights start to flicker and Veronica drops her book. When she picks it up, she finds the word run scribbled several times. Surely he could have used some of that real estate to provide more detail. The following day, Kirk is called to the school office where the principal inquires why he visited Mary's mother. He says that it was for an assignment, but the principal doesn't believe it. Elsewhere, we see Veronica at a basketball game. She tries to contact Kirk desperately, but he doesn't respond. Simultaneously, we see the principal heading up the stairs after he receives a text from someone. At the basketball court, Veronica starts seeing the mysterious Brian in various locations. At one point, he stands on the other side of the court, so Veronica gets up from her seat and tries to reach him. She doesn't even realize that she is interfering with her play. When she finally snaps out of it, something shocking happens. The principal suddenly falls through the roof, leaving everyone terrified. Later, Kirk visits Veronica at her house and explains that he had told the principal his entire theory. He suspects that the poor man was killed because of it. However, Veronica believes that it was just an accident. As the two continue chatting, Kirk reveals that he started researching the remnants because he never got to say goodbye to his father. The latter suddenly passed away due to the explosion, and his remnant has never shown up. So, Kirk hopes that he can learn more about the phenomenon and contact his father someday. That night, Veronica experiences an unsettling nightmare where she sees Brian trying to grab her. She also experiences falling into an icy lake where two female ghosts are casually swimming. When she wakes up, Anna enters her room and mentions that she will be traveling to another city for a job interview. She will only be able to return in three days. This makes Veronica sad as her mom is going to miss her birthday and her birthday only happens once every four years. Later, as the remnant dad is sitting in his usual breakfast position, Kirk notices something strange. He sees that the man is holding a newspaper which was published three years after the explosion took place. The main headline is about the disappearance and murder of two girls, Emma and Claire. Kirk quickly notes down the details and begins researching them. He soon learns that they also had their birthdays on the 29th of February and were killed on the same day. In the next scene, the duo meets an acquaintance who reveals that Brian and Claire were in a relationship. Claire actually died in the same laboratory from which the explosion originated. Her death was so gruesome that many tourists flocked to the lab to witness her remnant's recreation of the death. Hearing this, Veronica and Kirk are perplexed and they wonder what Claire and Brian were doing in the lab. To find more information, they decide to head to Chicago. That evening, they arrive at the desolate city, which has been completely overrun by the remnants. Here, the entities last for hours, and their population is huge. This is perhaps due to the fact that Chicago is ground zero, and whatever is bringing the remnants has more influence here. Ignoring this, the duo heads to the laboratory, where several people are witnessing Claire's remnant in action. The woman appears to be scared, and she climbs a set of ladders, possibly trying to escape. However, she is caught and strangled mercilessly. Just then, Kirk notices Dr. Martin Steiner among the crowd and calls out his name. The latter, who appears to be living anonymously, tries to flee the scene, but the two eventually catch up to him. They grill him for answers, and he reluctantly decides to speak up. Martin takes them to his main lab and explains that when an explosion takes place, a dead person's echo is left behind. He gives them an example by showing the shadow of the deceased people left behind by the Hiroshima and Nagasaki victims. Dr. Martin explains that these echoes are a doorway that connects the living people to the dead. This part of the story feels insensitive. His team used this theory and treated numerous people who were on the verge of death. However, their main goal was to resurrect a totally dead person. For this, they needed a live person with the exact birth date of the person they wanted to reanimate. The process was called spectral transfusion. However, their experiment was unsuccessful and it resulted in the catastrophic explosion that took many lives. Dr. Martin then reveals that Brian was was one of his assistants who worked with him on the project. However, when Claire was killed, he changed. The doctor theorizes that Brian killed the other victims with the same birthday so that he could resurrect Claire through spectral trans bullshit. Meanwhile, Kirk steals a photograph from the lab so he can research it later. He's always researching stuff, that boy. Dr. Martin then confirms that whatever the government
government is telling them is not true. The remnants can indeed alter the present, and they are a threat to the living. Hearing all of this, Veronica wonders if Brian is trying to kill her, as she also shares the same February 29th birthday. She tries to ask for more information, but the doctor, who is riddled with guilt, abruptly commits the unthinkable. He's doing that now? Really? really? In the next scene, the duo returns to the school to investigate further, but as soon as they arrive, some officials apprehend Kirk. They have found a gun in his locker. Desperate for help, Veronica approaches Bittner and explains the entire situation. Luckily, he believes her this time, as he has already talked to Mary's mom, and because it's about time he did something. He then reveals that Brian was kicked out from his previous school because they discovered a gun in his locker there, just like today. This this makes Veronica suspicious of him, so she decides to ignore him from now on. But the problem isn't solved yet. Since the 29th of February is tomorrow, Veronica assumes that Brian is going to kill her. Fortunately, Bittner has a solution. He offers to design a special room in her house where she can be safe. This room will be enclosed with lead lining, which apparently keeps the remnants out. Veronica knows that she doesn't have any other options, so she promptly agrees. Meanwhile, Anna reaches the said job location but learns that no one had called her. Someone actually played a dirty prank on her. That evening, Kirk pays Veronica a visit and tries to talk to her, but she acts cold. Out of frustration, he then reveals that he had carried the gun in his previous school to protect himself, not to harm others. However, he has no idea who placed the gun in his locker yesterday. Still, Veronica doesn't want to talk, so she asks him to leave. There, the two work for hours and finally design the special room. Veronica is asked to spend the night there until the danger is over. Meanwhile, Kirk researches the picture he took from the lab and makes a startling discovery. It turns out that Bittner was also one of the scientists in Dr. Martin's team. This makes Kirk realize that the man is up to something evil. He desperately tries to contact Veronica, but fails because of no network in the room. With no options there, he rushes to save her. As soon as Kirk arrives outside the house, he notices Bittner's daughter, Eva's remnant. This reveals that she is not a real human after all. Following this, the movie goes into a flashback where all the mysteries are unraveled. During that fateful day, Eva was also in the laboratory, and Bittner tried his best to save her, but failed. Due to her demise, he blamed himself day and night, and that's when he came up with the idea of reanimating her using spectral trans whatever. For this, he kidnapped several girls, including Claire, but each of his experiments failed. When Brian got to know of this, he tried to warn Mary, but he ended up up dying at the hands of Bittner as well. After this, the evil professor changed his name and started working at the school so that he could get personal records of the students. When he finally discovered that Veronica is a February 29th, he planned to use her for spectral absolute nonsense. It turns out that Bittner was the one who placed the gun in Kirk's locker and called Anna for an interview. Back to the present, as Kirk tries to contact the police, Bittner arrives from behind and knocks him out. He then buries the poor guy alive. <laughs> After this, he returns to the special room where Veronica is staying. She is still unaware that the guy wants to kill her. However, when she gets a cut on her finger, she remembers that she had a vision of the same thing. She then puts two and two together and realizes that the visions were trying to warn her, which means that Bittner is a red flag. Scared, she tries to run away, but the evil guy catches up to her. He is about to finish her off, but just then, Veronica's dad appears, which distracts Bittner for a moment. Taking advantage of this opportunity, she hits him with one of her skates and runs outside. However, he once again catches up to her and tries to strangle her. When there's nowhere to go, Veronica breaks the ice beneath him, causing both of them to plummet into the freezing water. But even there, the evil guy continues to strangle her. He is about to kill her, but right then, Brian's remnant arrives and frees Veronica. Simultaneously, the remnant of Mary also appears and drags Bittner down, finally finally killing him. In the aftermath, Veronica reaches the surface, but she is too weak to rise up. Fortunately, Kirk arrives just in time and saves her. It is revealed that when he was under the ground, on the verge of death, his father's remnant showed up and dug him out. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.